So here's an example. Find the domain and vertical asymptotes for g of x equals x squared minus 1 over x squared plus x plus minus 2. So x squared minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. So the solution, you factor the numerator and denominator. Okay, now find the domain before you find the asymptote. So you need to find the domain before you simplify. This is always true. So the domain, we cannot divide by zero. And that's the only restriction we have here because there's polynomials. You can use any real number in a polynomial as an input. So the only problem that we could have here is dividing by zero. So we have to have x minus one not equal to zero and x plus two not equal to zero, which means that x is not equal to one and x is not equal to uh, minus two. So I graph those on the number line and uh, everything, every other real number is in the domain. So I just filled in everything else with open dots at one and minus two. So if you write that in interval notation, it looks like this. You just, you have three different intervals. If you draw the graph, you can easily see what the intervals are. And then always read, when you write out the intervals, always read left to right. Then you won't get numbers backwards. So negative infinity to minus two, union minus two to one, union one to, to infinity. And the uh, endpoints are, you use uh, for, for each interval, you use parentheses because we're not including any of the endpoints. So, so what did I do here? I reduced the um, x minus 1 over x minus 1. So now I'm going to look for vertical asymptotes. So to find the vertical asymptotes, I have to reduce this. So I reduce it. So I find the domain first, then reduce it to find the asymptotes, the vertical asymptotes or asymptote. There's only one in this case. So I cancel the x minus one over x minus one, and I get x plus one over x plus two, with x is still not equal to one or negative two. I just wrote that down to remind myself because you can't tell by looking at this that x can't be one. That comes from up here. So I just wrote that down to remind myself and then the asymptote will be x equals negative 2, the one that shows up once it's reduced. So you, you set the denominator equal to 0. It gives you the equation for the at vertical asymptote, right? which is x equals negative 2. The vertical line is x equals some constant, right? So notice that the domain G, this is just to reiterate, the domain G is found before reducing, the vertical asymptote is found after asymptotes. There can be more than one. Obviously you could have more than one factor on the bottom after reducing. So the vertical asymptotes are found after reducing. And that's very, very important to remember. So where the reduced factors equal zero, the graph will have a hole or holes if there is no asymptote there. So what am I saying? So for this example up here, what I mean by the reduced factors is uh, the x minus one over x minus one. So that x not equal to one, that will have a hole in the graph and I gra I'll graph it over here just to show you what I mean by that and to show you the asymptote. At this point, we haven't talked about how to draw these graphs. So this is just an example so you could see what is going on. That's the vertical asymptote at x equals negative two. And there happens to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals one, which we haven't talked about yet. So don't worry about that. And then I just graphed a few points. I just, usually I go left and right from the center. The center would be uh, where the two asymptotes cross. So I just went left and right 
one to the right of there and one to the left, and then can calculate the value of y for that, where y I'm assuming, of course, is g of x. And there's an open dot at x equals one because of this business here, because you have zero over zero if you plug in one, that's really bad. Uh, so we have x not equal to one. This one gives me a vertical asymptote. This one gives me, there's a hole right there, but you still need to know the coordinates where to put the hole. So I still plug one into the equation, but I have to plug it into this one, not this one. So I plug one in here, I get two thirds. That's where this came from. And so one comma two thirds is an open dot because you can't plug one in, in the original function. This is actually kind of uh, slightly incorrect. I really shouldn't call this G because it's not really G, but we often do this when we're, when we're working these problems. It really should be, a, well, it is G if I designate that X can't be one. That's why I put that there. But technically you, wouldn't, you don't have to put that down on your paper or anything. Uh, but technically this, if I didn't have that, this is actually a different function. It's just the same as this everywhere except at one, x equals one, everywhere except this point, which is missing in the original g, the original function. So let me draw that. So it looks like that. It's actually what we call a hyperbola with a point missing here. Right there, there's a point missing. So that's the ones that you cancel off. If you don't get an asymptote there, like if there's not more factors of X minus one in the denominator for this one, like this could have been squared down here. If that was squared, then there actually would have been an asymptote here. Cause when you cancel it, you'd still have an X minus X plus, or sorry, X minus one factor on the bottom. So you just get an asymptote. Okay. Uh, Hopefully that'll become more clear as we do more problems and as you work more practice problems on the homework.